Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, what is the difference between at the rate factory and at the rate data provider annotation? Let me answer. Both these annotations, that is at the rate factory and at the rate data provider belong to test engine. Okay, that is the first thing. And both these test engine annotations can be used for implementing data driven testing in your projects. Okay, either you can use at the rate factory for implementing data driven testing mechanism in your project, or you can use at the rate data provider also for implementing data driven testing. Okay, these are the similarities. Okay, but there is a difference. What is the difference between these two annotations? You will not be able to understand this difference in the beginning. Okay, after the practical demonstration, you will be able to understand it clearly. But let me give a heads up. Okay. Even though you don't understand, just listen to me what I am saying. Okay. So at the rate factory will implement data driven testing. Okay. By creating multiple instances of a class. Okay. Of the same class, multiple instances will be created to implement the data driven testing. To make the data driven testing possible, okay, multiple instances of the class will be created, okay, of the same class will be created, okay, to, to perform the data driven testing or to implement the data driven testing. Whereas at the rate data provider is not like that, only one instance of the class, okay, still data driven testing is possible, okay, with the help of data driven uh, data provider, only one instance of the class for, for getting this data driven testing implementation possible, with the rate, whereas at the rate factory, Okay, have to create multiple instances of the same class for making this data driven testing possible. Okay, so maybe you may understood something or you may have not understood whatever the things that I have stated here, but after the practical demonstration, you will get a clear cut idea. Okay, so let's start with the practical demonstration. First, I'll start with at the rate data provider, which only requires one instance of the class. Okay, only one instance of the class need to be created for this. Okay. So for that, I will uh, switch to this uh, Eclipse ID where we have this project test, uh, test engine demo project, which is already configured with test engine library. Here we have a class. I'll expand this project once of all so that we can see what is there. Here demo class is there. Okay, that's fine. In the demo class, what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm going to create a method. Okay, public wide sample test. One test method I'm creating. I'm just providing this test method with at the rate test annotation. Okay, hover the mouse on this. Over the mouse on this at the rate test and import this from test engine library. And uh, okay, fine. So here I would like to pass some data. Okay, let's say string username, comma string password. Okay, these are the two parameters we have. Here I'll simply print it out to prove that this particular test method got run and all. I have to just print it out this username, username. Plus, open, plus password. Okay, like this, I'll write. So, if this test method is executed only once, only once this will be printed. If the same test method is executed multiple times with multiple sets of data, this print statement will be printed for that many number of times. So, how to implement the data driven? This test method will run only one time. Okay, but how to implement uh, data driven uh, in data driven testing here? Okay. So with the help of data provider, I can do. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll create one more method which will supply the data. Multiple sets of data, this particular method is going to supply. Uh, data supplier I'll call, okay? Data supplier or whatever it is, okay? Provide data or whatever the name you want to give, okay? You can give to this method, that's okay. And uh, I will create a two dimensional object array, object, Two dimensional object array is equal to here. I would like to pass that uh, data. Okay. Two dimensional object array type of data. Three sets of data I am passing. First one you see user one, comma, password one. This is the first set of data. User one, password one is the first set of data. And this is the second set of data, user two, password two. Second set of data I am passing. This one is the third set of the data. Like this, any number of sets of data you can pass. User three, password three. Okay, like that. Three sets of data are there now. Okay, now we have the three sets of data, and this data. Okay, let me give some variable name here. Uh, data, I'll say. Yeah, I'll say data, and I'll return this data. Return the data. 
when I return the data, the return type should be same two dimensional object array. Okay. I'm returning this data, which is of which type two dimensional object array type. So the return type of this method is and for making this particular method supply the data to this test method, I have to provide an annotation here that is none other than data provider annotation. Okay. So here you see, I have to give the difference between the at the rate data provider annotation and at the rate factory. Now I'm explaining about the at the rate data provider. Okay. So the method which is going to supply this multiple sets of data to this test method need to provide need to be provided with at the rate data provider annotation over the mouse and import it from test ng library. And this is not at all, not that done. Okay. Just by naming this method with at the rate data provider method and making this, uh, you know, a data supplier doesn't matter. Okay. And you can name this uh, data supplier method with some something like, for example, name is equal to data generator. Okay. Data generate some different name I am giving. Okay. Intentionally either method name it can take, or if on the top of that, if you can name this data provider with some name, that is also fine. You can also say data provider one also data provider one like this. You can give any name here with this name. We can access this supplier. Okay. I want this test method to access the data from this data provider. Okay. Which is going to supply the data. Okay. So to make that happen, beside the other test, you have to write data provider attribute. Okay. Data provider is equal to, and here you have to give the name of this uh, data provider like this. Okay. Now these two are connected. How many instances of the class are created in this example? Only one instance. Okay. I don't have to create multiple and never created multiple objects of this class. I have not created uh, any object of this class. Only one object is internally created. Okay. Internally, one object is created for this demo class, which we cannot see. Okay. Only one instance is there. I don't have to create multiple objects of this uh, demo class to make this data driven testing possible. I just have to create a test method and create a data provider method, which is going to supply the data and connect this with the test method. Okay. With the help of this attribute and all that's it. Data driven testing is possible with the help of data provider like this without the need for creating multiple, in multiple instances or objects of the class. Now, if you run this, okay, if you run this test method, this test method is going to run how many times? Three times. Every time this, uh, uh, for every set of data, this test method is going to run one time. Okay. That means three times the same test method will run for every set of data. This test method is going to run. So test method is going to ultimately run three times. Okay. And this print statement will prove that. So let's run this and see what's happening in the output. User one, password one, user two, password two, user three, password three should be printed in the output console. Just go and see what's happened. User one, password one got printed. User two, password two. User three, password three. How many times the same test method got uh, printed, uh, got executed three times. Every time this test method got executed, you can also see here, somewhere here, where is that? Okay, that's okay. So every time, you see what's happening? Every time the same test method got executed with the different sets of data, okay? Fine. Here we have the test engine results tab also. You can see the same test method got executed three times with uh, three different sets of data. Okay. This is uh, this is the implementation of uh, data driven testing with the help of this data provider annotation. Now, one more thing is there in this that is at the rate factory. Can we achieve the same thing? Can I can I get the can, can I achieve the same result with the help of at the rate factory annotation? Yes, that is also possible. But the only difference is that. We have to create multiple objects of this class. Okay. For at the rate factory to make the same, same thing possible. We have to create multiple objects of this class. Okay. So how I'll let you know. Okay. We'll remove this data provider because we are going to at the rate factory implementation. So this is also not required. We'll keep this like this at the rate test and all those stuff. Okay. These things will be there. Uh, done. Now, what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create, okay, to make this uh, at the rate factory implementation for uh, data driven testing to be possible, few rules are there. That is, along with this test method, okay, which need to be run multiple times with multiple sets of data. Before that, I'll be, I'll be creating a constructor in this class, okay, in this class, I'll create a constructor. How to create a constructor public? Name of the constructor will match with the name of the class. So, like this. And here I'll parameterize this constructor with this username and password. Okay. This username and password. Okay. So I have to remove it from here. 
uh, username and password no need to be parameterized in the test method. Rather, the username and password password should be parameterized here. What about this username? Use this password. They are at the class level now. Spring username, spring password. Okay, like this you can do it. Okay, they are at the global level now, class level, and these are the parameters. Now I have to assign this parameter in this constructor to this class variable. That is how to segregate this uh, class level uh, uh, variable with this uh, parameter level variable. So with uh, this keyword, this dot username is a class. Okay. This is nothing but this one. Okay. Is equal to parameter. That is username. When you call this constructor and pass some data, that data will be assigned to the class level variables. Simple terms. Okay. This dot password is equal to password. Okay. Done. That's it. The constructor is creation is done. Now, how to make the data driven testing possible by passing multiple sets of data, okay, and running the same test method multiple times for the multiple sets of data with this structure created already. Now you create one more thing that is, uh, you just name it anything, class, name it anything, factory runner, anything you can name. There's no particular rule like it should be the name. I'm just giving factory runner, looks fancy for me. Inside this, I'll create a method. There is one rule here. When you are creating this method in this factory runner or whatever the class you are saying, okay, there is a rule that this one should return a single dimensional object array, okay? And you just name this method factory uh, generator, okay, data generator or whatever it is, okay? So just imagine whatever you want, okay? Like this, you create a method. It's giving error because we have to return something. Now let's create return. Okay. We have to return an object array. Okay. We have to return an object array. How to return an object array or you can do something like this object array is equal to. Okay. So here, here guys, in this object array, we have to create multiple objects of this class. Okay. We have to create multiple objects of this class. How to create multiple objects? You have to call this constructor, simple words, okay? So this object array, like this you put, and write out new, new, you just give some uh, like OBJ or something, okay? New, new what? New demo, okay? New demo, sorry, just give something, okay? New demo, and here you need to pass that, okay? The constructor cannot be empty here, right? If you see the demo class, it's not a uh, empty constructor. It has some two parameters. You have to pass those things here, okay? For example, here I'll pass user one, comma, password one. First object I created, you see? In this factory, at the rate factory related stuff, I have to create multiple objects. Already one object I created. Similarly, I created multiple objects. That is uh, new. This is second object I'm creating, new demo. User two, user two, comma, password two. Second object I created. Now third one, third object, any number of data you can create. So I'm trying to implement data driven testing, but in this data driven testing, to make this possible with the help of at the rate factory annotation, okay, I have to create multiple objects of this class. You see, for this demo class, how many objects I'm creating? Almost three objects, okay? user three comma password three that's it and here i have to provide at the rate factory annotation i have to provide at the rate factory annotation for the mouse okay import this factory annotation from test ng that's another thing and here a return statement should be there whatever that you created right that object you have to return it's a single dimensional object array that's done so if i run this you see when this object is created what will happen you see this object will be created when i run this this object will be created and this constructor will be called you user one will be passed to this parameter you password one will be passed to this parameter and they will be assigned to this uh, class level variables and the test method will run with the same user one and password one and this print statement user one password one will be printed and when the second object is created for the class same class 
user two will be password to this uh, username and the password two will be password to this password and they will be assigned to the class level variable this test method will run with the user two and password two. and when the third object is created using multiple objects i am creating to make this data driven testing possible okay but with the data provider i don't have to create this many number of objects only one object that also internally will be created you don't have to virtually uh, visu visually create it okay in case of data provider but in case of uh, at the rate factory thing you have to create multiple objects of the same class so that the test methods in the same class will run multiple times with multiple sets of data okay that's the intention right click on this run as exchange test let's see what will happen You see, we got the same output, user two, password two, user one, password one, user three, password three, okay? We got, you see, the, say, uh, the test got executed uh, three times, okay? You see, the same test got executed three times with my different sets of data. So this is what is at the rate factory. Hope you got the difference between at the rate factory and at the rate data provider. So both are from TextNG, both are TextNG annotations, that's the one thing, and uh, both can be used for for uh, implementing data driven testing in our projects okay and what the exact difference between at the rate factory and at the rate data provider test and annotations are at the rate factory we have to create multiple instances of the same class to make the data driven testing possible okay the same test method need to run multiple times with the uh, multiple sets of data for that to possible you have to create multiple objects of the same class whereas data provider you don't actually literally have to create anything but internally one object will be created okay in the within the same class everything will be done okay that's what is the difference. So hope guys, you got the answer for this uh, question. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.